hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we are again going to resume our discussion on electrical machines so we have posted around uh, four or five videos related to electrical machines where we have discussed the various basic introductory concepts related to electrical machines so in this video we are going to discuss some important terms and uh, notations related to rotate rotating electrical machines okay so these terms and notations they are very basic concepts associated with the mathematical expressions okay which we are going to use to derive the various uh, output expressions for the various uh, electrical devices so it's better that we have a clear cut understanding about these terms the notations so that whenever we come across these terms and uh, notations in the future videos there is no confusion okay so all electrical machines motors generators mainly they are of the rotating type which are involved in the interconversion of energy from one form to another that is from electrical to mechanical energy so rotation means the rotating parts okay it consists of two components mainly stator and rotor we will discuss about that the rotating part the rotor it rotates about an axis which is called as the shaft of the machine okay so the direction of rotation generally it is taken as positive if it is in anti clockwise direction and negative if it is in clockwise direction so here there are some basic terms and notations that are generally used to represent this rotating angular motion so the first term is the angular position okay of the rotating component so it is generally represented by this symbol theta so what is this angular position so the basic definition is that for any object the angular position is the angle at which that component or that object is uh, placed or it is measured with respect to some reference axis or some reference point okay so generally using the coordinate system the x axis the positive x axis is generally considered as the reference and all the angular position is measured either in clockwise or anti clockwise directions and the measurement units can be in radians or degrees okay somewhere you may find the units in degrees or radians so the interrelationship between the radians and degrees the unit is 180 degrees is equal to pi radians so pi is equal to 3.14 so let us see what i mean by angular position so let us uh, look at this figure suppose we have an object at a okay so if we want to measure the angle okay its angular position there are two ways in which we can represent it first the reference axis is important which is the positive x axis okay the positive x axis all measurements are done from this point this is the reference axis you should be clear about that next important thing is how to measure the angular position okay or the angular displacement whether you can measure it in anti clockwise direction or counter clockwise direction or you can measure it in clockwise direction so if you are measuring it in anti clockwise direction this is at 60 degrees with respect to this positive x axis 
so this is plus 60 degree because it is anti clockwise in radians it is pi by 3 radians suppose we want to measure it in anti clockwise uh, sorry clockwise direction then it is 300 degree clockwise from the reference axis or 5 pi by 3 radian clockwise from the reference axis this is negative okay a minus sign will be used because it is in clockwise direction so 60 degree anti clockwise or pi by 3 radian anti clockwise or 300 degree clockwise or 5 pi by 3 radian clockwise anti clockwise angle is taken as positive clockwise angle measurement is taken as negative okay next another example suppose we have another object which is placed at b okay again it can be measured in two ways first is 120 degrees anti-clockwise measured from the reference axis which is the positive x-axis or in radians it is 2 pi by 3 okay pi by 3 is 60 so it is 2 into pi by 3 which is 120 again it, in, in terms of uh, clockwise measurement it is 240 degrees clockwise or 4 pi by 3 radians clockwise again the measurement is from the positive x-axis which is the reference axis so anti-clockwise is taken as positive clockwise is taken as negative so it depends on you whether you choose radian as the measurement unit or degrees or you measure it in anti-clockwise direction from the reference axis or clockwise direction from the reference axis the thing which you need to remember and take care of is that always be consistent with the with this with this system that you are using okay if you are measuring something in anti-clockwise direction then make all the measurements in anti-clockwise direction and if you are measuring it in clockwise direction then make all the measurements in clockwise direction if you are using the units radian then make all the measurements in terms of radian if you are using degrees then make all the measurements in terms of degrees it's not like you make one measurement in terms of radian make another measurement in terms of degree it is not like that okay and always use one system of measurement okay in terms of direction and units okay so that there is no confusion okay the second important term associated with uh, the angular rotating machines is the the angular velocity so the angular velocity is the rate of change in the angular position okay this is not angular position it is the rate of change of angular position with respect to time okay angular velocity is the rate of change in angular position with respect to time okay so basically it is the angular displacement divided by time and its symbol is omega okay this it is d theta by dt where d theta is a small change in the angular position and d theta is a small interval of time okay so the units of measurement is generally radians per second revolutions per second or revolutions per minute okay so 2 pi radians make one revolution so in terms of that we can uh, we can understand it okay one complete rotation okay one complete angular motion gives us 360 degrees or 2 pi radians so 2 pi radians makes one revolution so the measurement units can be radians per second revolutions per second or revolutions per minute so there are different notations used for each of these measurement units for example omega subscript m for angular velocity measured in terms of radians per second f subscript m 
for angular velocity measured in terms of revolutions per second and n subscript m for angular velocity measured in terms of revolutions per minute okay so uh, you have a good understanding about these for example if you find this it means measurement is in terms of radians per second if it is fm then it is revolutions per second if it is nm it is revolutions per minute now the interrelationship between these measurement units is in this way relationship between nm and fm that is measurement in terms of revolutions per minute and revolutions per second we know we know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds so obviously this will be nm is equal to 60 fm okay the angular velocity in terms of minute will be 60 times the angular measurement in terms of second the next uh, relationship is between the angular velocity measured in terms of radians per second and the angular velocity measured in terms of revolutions per second again i said that 2 pi uh, radians makes one complete revolution okay one complete revolution is equal to 2 pi radians so again it will be divided by 2 pi on this side so the revolutions per second the angular velocity measurement will be equal to this angular velocity in radians per second divided by 2 pi okay so you understand them so have a good knowledge about these interconversions and these notations so the next uh, important term associated with angular motion is angular acceleration again so simple definition the angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity with respect to time so again it is time derivative of the angular velocity d omega by dt which is alpha the angular acceleration the symbol of angular acceleration is alpha so the unit is radians per second squared that is the unit of angular acceleration so here are some of the important terms associated with rotating electrical machines now let us have a correlation okay how linear and angular motion can be correlated the analogous relationship between them let us try to understand so in linear motion the linear displacement is generally represented by r okay sometimes it is represented as s also or r so here we have taken it as r in angular motion the angular displacement is taken as theta the angular displacement or the angular position the linear velocity is represented as the rate of change of displacement with respect to time dr by dt okay the angular velocity omega is the rate of change of angular motion or the, the angular position or the angular displacement with respect to time d theta by dt acceleration the rate of change of linear velocity with respect to time in linear motion that is dv by dt a is equal to dv by dt where the angular acceleration alpha is the rate of change of angular velocity with respect to time which is d omega by dt so here r is equivalent to theta v is equivalent to omega and a is equivalent to alpha okay the correlation between linear and angular motion so r in linear motion is same as theta in angular motion v in linear motion is same as omega in angular motion and a that is acceleration in linear motion is same as alpha which is angular acceleration in the angular motion so here we have discussed some of the important terms associated with uh, the electrical machines especially the rotating electrical machines starting from angular position then angular velocity different ways of measuring angular velocity the interrelationship angular acceleration and the correlation between linear and angular motion so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much